That scary sight is on St. Mary's Boulevard in the Riverside area, and it's owned by Nancy McDowell Dunford. She's here in our studio this morning. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning. So what was your reaction when he showed up and told you that you might need to shut down? Shock. <laughs> my heart sunk to my toes. Um, I he I was speechless, which doesn't happen very often. Um, when he told me that someone had called and said that our haunt was considered, uh, they thought they was it was a fire hazard, and um, they get a call, they have to come and inspect it, and I just complied and did everything that he asked me to do. And, um, which wasn't much, honestly, removing the hay bales, uh, put up emergency exit signs. We changed up some lighting, um, and installed four new fire extinguishers. And that's all we had to do. And, and I had to draw up a fire plan as well. And train volunteers to walk people And through. we have to, uh, yep, when we get volunteers that come, because we get them every night, so I have to take them through, show them where all the fire extinguishers are and the exit signs and train them on how to use a fire extinguisher. And they have to walk with a maximum group of five people at a time through the maze. And I'm allowed up to four groups of five people at a time in the maze. How long did it take you to get back up and running? Oh, we were up and running the next day. Of course you were. <laughs> Have you ever had any concerns in the past? Anyone approach you and say that they felt like there were some issues? Never. And how long have you been open? Um, we have been this large for about seven years, I think, now. The changes that you made, did that affect what you do in any way? Nope. Everything's sort of the same. When I turn everything on around 6 o'clock every day, until I shut it off at night, even before all of this. I'm outside the whole time so that I can, I call it babysitting my haunt, right? Because I know we attract so many people. I have to be out there to make sure that everything is groovy. There's no problems with, you get groups of kids. You just got to make sure that everything is good. Take us back to the beginning of all this, all how, how this all started. Take us to that carport. When did you get it, and how did that snowball into what it is today? My whole life I've loved Halloween. I've always been crazy about it. Um, uh, when I think I turned 40-ish, 42-ish, my husband, who indulges my passion. As he should. As he should, that's right. <laughs> uh, he bought me our first carport, from a guy selling it off of buy and sell for 50 bucks. And we turned it into the tunnel of terror. So we had it set up at the front of the driveway. Our driveway is very long. Then there was a big, long nothing. And then I had a big setup set up in the garage. Over time, you know, I'd add things to kind of give things, uh, people things to look at as they walked from the end of the maze, end of the tunnel to the garage. And then... One day I came up with this idea where I, I got to do something. I have to make something better. Pallets are free and plentiful. So I went out and got a whole bunch of pallets off the side of the road because you can get them everywhere. And I built our first walk through just one row with three, we call them scene rooms. And then it kicked you into the garage. I did that for one year, I think only one year. And then it just... We have so much more room. I can do so much more. And then I went and got lots and lots and lots more pallets, and it grew to the size that it is. How big is this display? Uh, from the entrance to the exit, it's 250 feet long because our property is a lot and a half, a lot and three quarters. So our driveway is very wide. Are you done? It feels like a silly question to say that. Are you done or is it going to get bigger? It's a very silly question. It is a very silly question. I'm never done. Okay. Um, it it actually can't grow wider because of the size of the tarps. Our tarps are 30 by 40. So we're kind of at the mercy of the size of the tarps. Can't get bigger tarps? <laughs> They're already <laughs> hard to work with. And, uh, you know, I don't want to bring it any further down the draw. It's... 
I don't want to bring it any longer because I don't want to have it ending at the end of our driveway. So it's, and then that just means it's more tarps to put away and that's no fun either. Where do you store everything? Everything gets stored at our house. Okay. We have two sheds in the backyard behind the garage that are built specifically for Halloween and we call them the sheds of the dead. So they hold a lot of that stuff. Our garage is very big and it's an attic all up top. So a uh, bunch of other things go up in the attic. All the pallets go under our front porch on the side of the house. Um, I sacrifice my parking spot in the garage for the two giant operating tables we have in there. It's okay. It's worth the sacrifice. For so, how many days of the year? When do you turn those lights on the first time at 6 p.m.? Not till, well, it kind of depends on where Halloween falls in. Oh, no, we're open for a month. Oh. <laughs> so this year... It depends on when October 1st falls. So this year we opened at on September 28th because that was the first weekend before October 1st. So we're open the whole month. What gets the biggest reaction? That's really hard to say. <laughs> Everything? It's, yeah, it's there's we have so much stuff. What's your favorite? Everywhere that it's mind blowing. Like mm -hmm. it's uh, everywhere you look, there's something everywhere you look. I think my personal favorite, we have a horseshoe driveway and we have four eight foot tall um, stone looking pillars that I built five years ago, maybe. I built them out of plywood and rigid styrofoam and then I heat treated them to make them look like stone and melted the... the uh, mortar lines with a soldering iron and stipple painted them and it took forever, but they're awesome. <laughs> and then the following year I built, or may, uh, probably the year before that maybe, I built a St. Mary's Cemetery, you know, the big yeah. arch that goes like that. I built the St. Mary's Cemetery entrance sign. And then the year after that we built um, the old uh, cemetery gates with all the finials and right. people come up and they touch everything because they want to, it looks very real. Yeah. There's several Halloween attractions around the area. So I need to know, what do you think when it, how yours fits on the scary scale? Um, we try to keep it pretty PG just because we have so many young little kids that come. If I had my way, <laughs> which my husband won't let me in that regard. Or may argue you already have your way. Well, I kind of do. I kind of do. But I have to respect his opinion on this because we have so many littles that come. I don't want to. I do want to traumatize everybody, but I can't make it too graphic. Right. You know, I, I have to be. I have to. Like how young is is our kids? Could I bring my two and four year old? Oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. People walk through with newborn babies. I mean, mm -hmm. they don't know what's going on anyway, but we get absolutely every age to 90. Our 90 year old neighbor and his wife went through last night. Amazing. Nancy, yeah. thank you so much for coming in this morning. Thank you. Nancy McDowell Dunford runs a Halloween display called St. Mary's Cemetery. It's back up and running after being shut down by the Windsor Fire Department. How hardcore are you for Halloween? Do your decorations spill off the porch and onto the lawn, or do you keep the merriment fairly tame compared to your neighbors? Text us at 519-984-2051. Runners laced up and ran the cross-border marathon yesterday, the Detroit Marathon, has been attracting runners from around the world since 1978. That's 46 years. The race is one of the few truly international marathon courses in the world. And well, that's inspiration brings runners out. What keeps them going when muscles start to cramp and doubts start to seep in? Some would agree it's the thousands of spectators who line the sidewalks. Here's some of those people yesterday who set up camp on Riverside Drive in Windsor.